Uh, basically, what we're doing today is a video on the main families that we keep here at No Mercy. Start off, of course, with the Buzzards, which is probably our main family and what I've been known best for over the years. Uh, so we're going to go into a bit of background of them and have a look at a few of the stock pigeons that we're breeding from. And hopefully it'll please you, so all the old Buzzard fanatics should recognise some of the names that we come across and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. But it'll give you a better insight to the way we breed here at No Mercy and the different families that are housed. And how we like the inbreed and lane breed to keep the lanes going, um, just to keep the old original lanes and blood lanes coming through them. So uh, basically when I started off in the Buzzards way back in, in uh, 89, 90, I moved back up here from Donegal, um, had pigeons down there. Me and another guy in the town, Joe Cassidy, God rest him. The only two that kept pigeons, everybody else in the town thought were two head cases uh, flying these pigeons. But uh, in 89, I moved back up here with the wife and kids and started racing like a fool for about two or three years. Couldn't get a car, couldn't get hardly a pigeon home. I realised I was racing the wrong type of pigeons for the type of racing that was going on up here. We needed something to build a bit, bit of speed and a bit of motivation. And basically what I done was I took the families from my brother Tommy, had a great line of old buzzard pigeons from coming down three red rum. And he had a fantastic hen called Bingo that had beat all the widowhood cocks in the in the uh, the ground basically every week she flew, she was in the money. And ended up with six first, was placed in the Skibreen Derby, ended up the second fastest velocity out of a mass liberation of thirty two thousand pigeons. And unfortunately Tommy had to give them up and he offered me the pigeons and I took uh, I think four and the rest went into the seal. Kept the old mealy hen as a pet and kept three that were very close to her. I was also very friendly with Harry Clinton at the time. One of the best fanciers that I ever seen to fly into Belfast in the tiny, tiny backyard. Pigeons had to come into his yard basically like helicopters because he lived in a three story house and there was a wee alleyway up the back. And the pigeons had to go up the alleyway and drop down. And this guy was knocking first prizes down for fun with pigeons, taming from the first race to the last, right out to France. And I got Polly with him, and he pulled the wheel over my eyes one week, but we were real good pals at this stage, and he told me he was going on holidays. Could I look after the pigeons for him? And I did. We went over, my old friend Paddy Tobin, we went over, cleaned his loft there, left it like a doctor's surgery for him coming home. And when he got home, he phoned me and thanked me for cleaning it. Asked me could I take the stock pigeons up for a couple of weeks till he built a new loft. And when he got me to take the stock pigeons up, he phoned me a week later and said, they're yours, I don't want them back. The man wouldn't take money, he wouldn't He wouldn't take nothing. He just wanted the pigeons to stay here. And said if he ever went back in them, he knew where to come. At that time, Harry was racing um, the old Nelly pigeons. Uh, as I said, Harry was racing the, the Nelly pigeons and the red rum pigeons and what he told me at the time was you'll get the red rummers maybe one every four weeks and they'll be there to win and win well, maybe win the fed, but the Nelly pigeons will be there consistently week after week after week. And it'll just show you the way different systems and different birds work for different people in different environments because within Two years of getting those pigeons from Harry and crossed them in with my brothers. Two to three years later, the Nelly pigeons, that lane was basically gone because they couldn't cope with the regime I had or the red, red rum ones cope with it better. But basically it ended up that the red rum pigeons I had were there every week and the Nelly pigeons were there maybe every four or five weeks. The complete opposite of what Harry had been telling me. But we worked through on them and we found these red rum pigeons to be getting more and more dominant. And Harry had a cock that was a blue pigeon, a grandson of red rum. He had five first, was 27 out of Denard in a nice steady hard race. Uh, the same day I was 44 out of Denard with another red rum hen. And I decided to pair these two pigeons together. And basically with that mating, that started off a whole dynasty of pigeons that I became famous for because that was the mother and father of Coca-Cola. And they say don't inbreed and don't lay inbreed. Well, those pigeons were heavily inbred to red rum on both sides. I paired them together and produced one of the best pigeons I've probably ever produced in my life. I never raced it. Paddy Tab had a cat get into his loft. He lost six young ones. He came on the phone crying like a wee girl. 
And I said to him, listen, dry your eyes, I'll be up in a half an hour. And I brought him up six young birds and Coca-Cola was one of them. And he phoned me a week later and says, I think the first hard race that we smoky one gets, it'll go down. Well, the first hard race the smoky one got, it won it by a streak. And that cop went on to win all sorts. Um, three times in the money in the Pence on Sturby in the first nine, three years consecutive. Six firsts in the club, first, second, third, fourth fed. Um, one year he won the first race in land, the longest race in land, and finished up winning pens on the channel. So that to me is a champion pigeon. And the whole lane of pigeons that I became famous for all came down through that cock and that lane of pigeons. But like everything else, you need the fresh and blood. And I got the pigeons via Harry Clinton that came from a guy, Keith Gott, the Dark Destroyer. And I ended up buying his main pigeons with a cock called Golden Eye and his mother and father, a pigeon called the Steer, who was from his, the Steer's father. And yes, the Steer's father was a brother, Little Black. So I brought them pigeons in, crossed them into the Red Rummers. They hit off right away. There wasn't a race that I couldn't tame from. There wasn't a race that I couldn't get them from. And the pigeons, you start to get to know a family of pigeons when you're working with a family of pigeons. And I was able to say, you know, we get a particular lane of pigeons today because of whether this way or that way. You know, if it had been a dark, dirty day, I was getting red rum blackjack pigeons. The blackjack pigeons came from Tommy Marston. Tommy was selling up here to have a lot of bypasses done. And I bought a couple of pigeons from him, but I bought a young cock who hadn't been raised as a young bird. Its nest mate had won the fed. Bought that cock and named him Blackjack. He cost me a brave few quid. Uh, but put him in and right away he bred two winners. His first ever young ones were 18 and 19. And they were both winners as young birds. Two hens in the nest. And I think I've said a couple of times before, it's a trait that I look for that a pair through the same sex in the nest because any time I have had it, the same sex in the nest have both went on to be winners and producers, whether they be cocks or whether they be hens. 18 and 19 were two of the best pigeons of bred. Um, 19 went down to him in Wright and Mara, bred in Blue Petra. Um, a couple of really, really good pigeons, Blue Petra, four weeks running in the first hundred of the NAPA. Uh, won the section, done all sorts with it. Um, because we don't do a lot of publicity and we don't seek a lot of publicity, a lot of what you do goes on miss are, are, are under under the radar. But in these gardens we have bred pigeons to win the NIPA, the East End Combine, first and second national, first and second NIPA five board, the East End Combine, Skibbereen Derby winners. Could go on and on, but as I said, that's only me beating my own drum. But for people watching who want to know, do they just do it for you or do they do it for other people? There are probably more pigeons, or more races with my my birds by other people than I have won myself over the years. Um, Morris Wilkinson, God rest him, won the National nice Flying Club averages a couple of years back, uh, just before he died. And he told me himself that the pigeon that I had bred for him was responsible for 65% of all the points he gained to win the National nice Flying Club averages. That hen is now with Ronnie Williamson, and I know Ronnie rates her very highly, has spoke to me about it. We've done a deal to swap a few young ones because of the lane it of, because I have still that lane here, and um, that basically is the Golden Eye Red Rum lane. Little touch of blackjack through it for the hard, dirty days, but they work out, and when you know your pigeons and know the days to send them and know the days they'll come in and the conditions that they cope with, I think you're already halfway there to winning races. you got to know your birds, got to know their background, and got to know their capabilities. So um, rather than bore you stupid here, ranting on, I'm going to bring a few birds in, show you a couple of the cocks, show you a couple of hens, particular lanes that they're from. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed and if you have any queries, please, please feel free to get in touch. Uh, here we have a blue cock, a fine pigeon he is too. Um, he's called Broken Legs. Uh, I tried racing this cock as a young bird. I sent him on a train and tossed, he came back with a broken leg. Put him in a splint for four or five weeks, got him back on the road again. Give him another toss, he came back with the other leg broken. So as I say that he wasn't for the road and I've stalked him and it's probably the wisest move I ever made. It's a no name pigeon. 28809. And he's from a hen uh, 9137. Or sorry, 9136. A beautiful blue hen who was a daughter of Goldeneye. 
In one year, this hen bred five first in the one season. Um, it's the lane of the golden eye. They were just consistent, consistent winners. Nearly in every nest, you had something. Lovely trait in this pigeon that I look for, and I think all good pigeons have it. If you look down at the tail, you'll see it's like a single tail feather. The pigeon basically is the shape of a, lay, of a wedge. And to me, I've never seen a good pigeon that didn't have that kind of trait. With a, a good racing pigeon, lovely balance. Nice swing on them, as you can see. Good step. But this pigeon here is the father of Morris Wilkinson's good hen. And it was a, just a chance mating that I say that I haven't crossed those lanes over in a while. And I've heard this blue cock to a daughter of Black Jack who I spoke about earlier. And they produced a little dark, or a little blue paid hen and I put it up in a cancer seal and Morris bought it. And as I've said earlier, you know what he done with it. And the hen is now with uh, Remy. This is a super, super eyed pigeon. Um, you can see a good looker, but out and out budget. And all the old lanes in it. I mean, in a couple of generations, I get to bring you back to 1980 with this pigeon. So, the, one of the things I liked about the budgets was, you know, they say when they get up in a few years, they're past their best. Well, the cock Harry, I named him Harry from Harry Clinton. It was a son of Red Rum. Died at 19 years of age. Bred his last winner at 18 years of age. So if it's in them, it's in them. And this boy here, I think, will be here for a while yet. So we have uh, three of them at stock. The same way bred as Morris's pigeon. So I've tried him to a new hen this year that I'm really looking forward to because the hen is a little Jack McGee hen. And we all know Jack's record at the distance and her good offence here is. And these pair actually this year picked themselves and because of their eyes were so compatible I decided to leave them together. So that's the blue cock, oh, wait, oh nine. I have a dark tip cock here. There's a true buzzer, of all the old buzzer men that go on about the darkens. Well this is full of darkens, this cock. His father was a blue cock, had 17 fed carts racing, it never won the fed, he actually arrived with Malcolm the day that Malcolm won the Fed for the third time, um, I lifted the blue cock first, looked over and seen Malcolm on the perch, let the blue cock go, clocked Malcolm, clocked the blue cock and ended up first and second Fed. But his father was a phenomenal racer and what I done was I paired him back into the Golden Eye lane. His mother is a half sister to Golden Eye and his father is a son of Golden Eye. So I stalked this cock but unfortunately as some of you know uh, I was diagnosed with cancer, so basically there was four years wasted with this cock. He just sat about for four years before I started breeding from him. And I always thought he had the makings of a good stock pigeon, because he reminded me of golden eye with his eye. But uh, from we started breeding him, because he was inbred, we were crossing out all the time. I've tried him with Jack's hen and got some good uh, channel pigeons from him, so we're hoping to get him on this year and take plenty of them and get them well tested because what I've been doing with his young ones is, is selling them out to people for stock because of his breeding. But a beautiful, typical busher, the old darkens and a class eyed pigeon. I know you can't see it from there but this is what they call a golden eye. So these are the type of pigeons we're working for. There are other people out there that'll claim to have buzzards and they'll tell you they, they have this, they have that. We here can back it up. I put everything on paper. I can bring you back 15, 20 years in the drop of a hat with a lane of pigeons now. It mightn't say everything they've done in the book, but it'll tell you what their mother and father is and what their mother and father is and what their mother and father because we can go back and back it up with proof and results when it comes to it. People will claim buzzer this and buzzer that. These are 100% buzzers. They're not watered down buzzers. They're not Dale Bar buzzers. They're not pigeons that were brought in that we can't back up without paper. We don't need the paper. We bred them. People know who I am, they know what I'm famous for. These are the buzzers that I'm famous for. Nobody else is in them unless I tell you about it. I have no problem holding my hands up and giving kudos to the good budget men that let me have the stock to produce pigs like this. Harry Clinton, take my hat off to you, gentleman. Tommy Martin, didn't know how good his pigs were. Didn't know, I never got a chance to prove it. But they're still here today and they're still winning. And you can claim to have hard day this and hard day that. This is where they came from and this is where they originated. Now that's my little rant over there. So we're going on to another dark one here. Now, 
you like the darkens, you like the corbets, you like that line of pigeons because you know everybody these days when they talk about old budget lanes, they all fall back to corbets and the darkens. Whatever. There was Tom Larkins, there was uh, Jesus Shelley, there was Ted Faber, there was any amount of them. There's a nice buzzer cock with a good golden eye and they have that typical old corbett head on them, the grey on the top, but a dark pigeon. Lovely eye cock this. Has never been tested on the road. He's uh, he's only an eleven pigeon. This cock for two years sat in my every mature night because he was bred as a late bred. We're gonna have a dig at him. And what I'm gonna do, I'll take two from myself and everything else off him will be put out to other fanciers to let them test it. So everybody out there likes to look at them, fancy a pair of them, as I say, once I get my two, they're there. What we do here is we take our own young ones and then anybody that wants anything can get it no matter what it's off because we have filled our purchase and there's no point in having good pigeons sitting gathering dust. Get the good ones out, let other people win them. So that's just three buzzard cocks there. Um, just to eat it up, we'll try a couple of buzzard hands here. That's my little helper coming in from the sea there. God bless him. Now, I like this pigeon. This is the nest mate, the Morris Wilkinson's good hen, the blue paid. Um, they talk about wings, and, and you'll hear the distance men talk about wings, and I don't necessarily believe that it's only distance pigeons. If the last three flights are as even as you can get them, be it sprint or be it distance, you have a good pigeon. Because all pigeons fly the same. They all have to move their wings up and down, but the one that moves it up and down more efficient is the one that's going to be at the front. Uh, look at the last three flights, they're practically the same length. And I've heard Ray Brothers on about it, different fancies, and it seems to be a trait in the distance lane of pigeons, but I don't believe it is. I believe it's just a trait in a good pigeon. Uh, there's the full wing on the pigeon. She's a full sister, as I said, to uh, the hen that Morris Wilkinson bought. And she's from the very first blue cock that I showed you there, and a little blackjack hen. And we're taking a few off this hen and sent her down to Ronnie Williamson, but we're going to take a couple for ourselves, not sure enough. And again, any pigeons here, you'll see, uh, we only take two off them, that's our purchase filled, and all the rest go out to whatever fancy. So if there's any old buzzard, buzzard fanatics out there, I want to try a few. You know Sid Collins still has a bit of a passion for them. There was a bell. We'll get you the buzzards. But as I say, a nice, typical blue paid buzzard hen. Uh, another stock hen, this. Uh, again, a little used because of the couple of years of illness that I had. She's uh, an 09 pigeon. And this is one I'm really looking forward to because uh, this pigeon was actually sold by me as a young bird and then brought it back when the guy went out of them. And it's nice to put your pigeons out and not see them for a few years and get them back and see how your work's paid off. When I got this pigeon back in my hand, I nearly fainted. It is one of the best eyes on a pigeon I've ever seen. People that like eyes, valid eyes, uh, should have a look at this one. Totally unbred from by me up until now because the hen's back two years and she's been in that Avery and as I said we have pigeons out there that should be bred from and aren't because we can only cope with so many. Again, the last three flights and this hen here is basically she's from the lanes of blackjack and golden eye. Not a lot of red rum in her. But beautiful stock pigeon, really looking forward to something off her. Would win any I say in showing the country. Um, I'll probably have uh, Timmy with Winnie down looking the end of this one, if you've seen it. But again, you know, single flight in the tail, as I pointed out earlier, and just a nice wedge shape. So, again, two, we're only taking two off her. Anybody else that finds it? I know Derek Teal in America has been torturing me about budgets and getting them over. If we do go ahead, Derek, and get this, the plans made and get things sorted out, I promise you two of this, I'd like to see how they go over there. I shouldn't really have took this hen out because she is pretty eggy, but it was just to prove to people uh, how far back we go with these pigeons. This pigeon is 08, 04027. 
Our nest mate, 04026 last year, bred as a young bird to be in the money five weeks running in the young bird racing. Just missed out on one point for young bird of the year. And believe it or not, uh, most of you maybe won't understand this, but the old guys that know their boys as well. This is a great granddaughter of Red Rum, and considering what his Red Rum was, I don't think there's anybody in the world could tell you they have granddaughter, great granddaughters of Red Rum. This is a great granddaughter of Red Rum, super high pigeon, and her nest mate's still out there, and both of them have bred the goods. So when we say we can bring you back to the old buzzards, we can bring you back to the old buzzards. Now, everything off this hen this year will be kept back bar two for racing, because we need to keep our old original lanes. She's been paired already on the bull to a cock that has bred 10 first, another um, cock from the lanes of Blackjack through Tommy Marston. And uh, she's now only a different cock, but uh, we'll be keeping the birds off this hen this year because she is she's knocking the ears up and, and her nest mate has bred as great pigeons as well. So basically, without boring the trunks of you, with bird after bird after bird and ranting on about them, that's our buzzards. That's the No Mercy buzzards. And that's what we house here. Thank you.